Welcome back, today's video is going to show you how to create an email marketing campaign on MailChimp. This is going to be part one of the three parts and in this episode we're going to look at creating a template. So once you've logged in and you're on this page here, or any page really, you just need to go to the templates tab at the top. Click on that and then we can get started with the template. So what you want to do is go to the top right and click on create template. That will bring up all the themes and layouts that you can start with as defaults and it's up to you how you want this to be you can have a single column single column with full width uh, obviously a one column that splits into two and all of the possibilities there as well so we're gonna go with a simple one a simple email and go for the single column now that we're in the template editor there is a uh, content on the right here and we can choose bits depending on what we have for the email that we're gonna create so First of all we'll look at text. Alright so to edit the text you want to click onto the text itself. We're currently on the logo but if you click anywhere on this text box it will bring up the text editor on the right and then it's uh, really simple actually to edit text. It's just like your traditional Microsoft Word. We can obviously bold it by clicking the B. We can put it into italics and underline it as well so you'll get used to how this works quite quickly. Colour is here and you can highlight text as well. Hang on, let's do that properly. Like that. So obviously you want to look and see how it actually turns out on the left here. But it's completely up to you how you want it to be. We'll just turn it back to the automatic. And obviously in terms of the alignments, you've got that as well. So I think a lot of emails will be well, you want the text to be centered, so you can do that by clicking the center alignment tool there. If you go over to the settings tab, you can actually change the amount of columns that the text is set as. So obviously there you go, it looks different in two, and you can choose how it splits each column as well. And I mean, you can see how that effect might be helpful, but it's likely you'll just want the default one column for an email. So you'll definitely want to include an image on your email. To do that, you want to go back to the content section. If you're not sure how to get there from the text editor, then you can just click save and close at the bottom. And then you want to drag in the image. You want to get used to how the drag and drop function works on MailChimp, but it's actually quite simple. It'll just tell you the possible places that it can be. We're going to put it above the text in the body section. So now you've got your image box in place, you can either drop an image in or click browse. If you click browse it will take you to the content manager for MailChimp and then all you want to do is hit the upload button in the top right to choose an image. So once you've uploaded your image it will drop in here like this and you can see how it actually looks. If you're happy with it then you can leave it, however you may get this um, message here and this basically means that the image is too large. It's a 4K image at the moment and that is far too big for an email so to fix it it's quite easy to do you just want to click let's fix it and then it will bring up the resize tool once it loads in you'll have an option at the top it will default it to the size that it wants it to be and that's probably about right 1024 by 576 so hit apply and it will do that automatically so similar to the original text we looked at you can actually drag in a boxed text tool if you drag that into where you want it it's the exact same editor as the original text tool we looked at however it's actually in a box which is good if you want it to look like that a divider tool is used to well divide your email into sections if we drag it in be in between the two items we've already added you can see that it creates a very thin and light line that's the default we can change that easily by making sure we're on the uh, tool itself and then choosing the width and the colour of the divider so obviously that looks horrendous at the moment with it being the red however we can choose that colour to something that suits it a bit more so you can see how important a divider can be to break up parts of your email an image group speaks for itself it's just multiple images but in one section of your email obviously you'll need smaller images to have the maximum effect and the upload process is the exact same as the original image that we looked at earlier. The next two tools, image card and image plus caption. An image card is just image with text underneath it and it's in the text box feature. So instead of you having to manually make both of these, it does it itself, which is quite helpful. And you can see how that would be effective for an email. 
and an image with a caption is, well, it's the same, it's just the text is formatted slightly differently. If you go to the settings, you can choose the number of images for the to have captions, choose the alignment and the caption position, so if you want captions to be at the left side of the image, you can do that as well. Social media is important, especially with an email. You want the option to link your social media, and we can do that. However, first we'll look at social sharing. You just want to drag in the social share tool to wherever you want in your email. It's probably best to do it close to the bottom, as you don't want this to be the main item. And in there you've got Facebook, Twitter, and any other service as well that can allow people to share your email. Social follow is pretty much the same. You drag that in as well and you can see we'll delete this one because it's got the default one here that it actually includes straight away with this template so there's twitter.com facebook.com you can add other services as well however you'll want to fill these in manually with your respective twitter and facebook and other accounts a button is also really helpful for an email it can be used for many different things uh, popular examples are either to another web page or to buy a product like this uh, is defaulted as you can choose the text as to what it says and what it actually links to so it could link to an email to send another email out or to a web address or to a file you just want to put the web address in there and then you've got your button customization options as well so you can choose the color we'll try and match it without spending too much time on it and the settings is the stuff like aligning the button in the email Unless you're starting from scratch when you're editing a template, a footer should already be included and all it is is a text box that is including things like copyright information that you'll want to fill out. You'll want to obviously include your own mail address as well, so delete the boxes that it has for you and you can include your own mail address, company name and other information as well. Second to last tool you can add is a code option if you drag this in. Code is it's HTML basically and if you've got no idea what this means then don't worry about it but HTML allows you to create custom elements for your email so you could do something similar as a stopwatch a clock or something like that all the way up to interactive features if you've got no idea what this means then stay clear from it because it's obviously quite advanced but there are a few websites that allow you to copy and paste HTML for simple things if you want to have a look at those I'll try and include one in the description so finally for a video you want to drag that in like the other tools and then you've got two options you can either browse and upload your own video however it's likely you could be linking this from YouTube in which you can put the video URL in there as well so style is simple as well to get used to once you've mastered the other tools you can choose the caption box color and settings are things like alignment so let's have a look through the design tab First off is page and this allows you to change things like the background colour. A lot of this is simple to get used to. Heading 1 is obviously the heading that we have in the email that it will allow us to change. And we haven't got a complete email set up so a lot of this won't do much but you can see how each heading will be changed via this page design section. The pre-header tool just allows you to change the bit which is before your header. At the moment it's the view this email in your browser which will link a will link the email to a browser. So if there's any compatibility issues that might help the user at their end. Header is obviously the bit below and it's a lot to do with the colouring at this and then the padding which is how much space it'll have above it. If we increase that to 39 you can see it's increased the padding here to 39 pixels so obviously you'll want to customize this to what whatever works best for you the body again we can choose the color of this um, it's likely you'll want to use the color of the text as a good way of getting the right color you can see that doesn't work at all so we'll want to try with a light color for that it's best Mobile styles allow you to change things like the heading sizes and how the line spacing is. This will make a lot more sense when we test the email, but it's probably best to make headings slightly smaller for mobile because you're trying to fit in a bit more information on a smaller screen. Now, if you're unsure what monkey rewards are, then you don't need to worry. It's just the way of MailChimp making money and, well, in a way, it's 
one of the things you have to put up with for having a free account you can just choose how the button will appear and there's obviously a few different options to choose from so let's move on to previewing and testing which is an important phase of the design we've created ours here and it's well the less said about it the better because I've only tried to show you the different things but let's go ahead and preview it to see how it looks Preview mode is something that is quite helpful. If we go to the desktop version, it will show us how it will look. Uh, it's different and it's difficult to say how it will look on in, in an inbox. You can actually go to inbox, but you have to buy tokens to see that. But you can see on mobile, the text appears quite big. We could probably make the text a bit smaller for mobile versions. So to actually see how it looks within an inbox, we can go, go to send a test email. And in there, we just need to put in the email that we want it to be sent to and then hit send test and that obviously will not send to anyone other than the person you've included so there's no need to worry about that if you're happy with how it looks you can save and exit and then in the next tutorial we'll look at how to create and import a list and then after that we'll look at how to finalize and send the campaign thanks for watching hope you found this video helpful and i'll see you in another one